ไปอีกสองโอเค so very welcome everyone I'm Tash we're going to do a practice today all about embracing the sense of releasing and letting go that comes with the autumn season And in terms of props, you might need one bolster because we are going to end with a restorative inversion. If you don't have a bolster, then don't worry. You can always use two bricks, or you can use two kind of sleeping pillows on top of each other. So we're going to start in a comfortable seated position. If you'd like to have a brick underneath the bum or anything just to kind of elevate your hips, feel free. Dex has come to join us. And just resting the hands, whatever feels comfortable for you. Just have a little wiggle of the shoulders, wiggle of the head, just to ease some tension away from the places that sometimes tend to get a little bit tight, especially during the working week. And then coming into some sort of physical stillness, we're going to start with an optional mudra. So mudras are hand gestures that can bring a certain energy into the practice. If mudras aren't really your thing, feel free to skip and you can just join in the meditation. If you're coming with me, we're going to take bu mudra, which is a mudra used for releasing. So we're going to take the peace fingers and then bend the ring finger and little finger in towards the palm, and then just rest the thumbs on top of the bent fingers, so on top of the ring finger, little finger, and have the peace fingers pointing up. Then we're going to flip the fingertips. Down and rest the fingertips on the mat or the earth either side of your body. Let's begin to close the eyes or just relax the gaze downwards. Centering, steadying, and creating a little bit of headspace. Beginning to notice the feeling of your fingertips on your mat. Relaxing the arms and the wrists. And there's a sense of ease through the shoulders, down the arms, into the hands. Now notice your breath. And feel as you stay here, maybe the exhales become a little bit longer. Sense of relaxation releasing already, starting to melt down through the arms. And ask yourself now, just a really gentle inquiry. What is one thought that you've been having a lot lately? that you're open to releasing this autumn? What is one thought that you're open to releasing? Making space for a clearer mind, just simply through the act of letting go what you no longer need. So if something like that comes to mind, common things are things like fear, worry, anxiety, tension. So just bring that one thought to mind, something that hasn't been helping you lately. And we're going to release it energetically through taking three breaths together. So when you're ready, take a slow inhale through the nose. Exhale out through the mouth, release it down into the earth and let the earth recycle it. Let's take that two more times. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth, letting go down the arms into the earth. One more breath in. And exhale, letting go. Beautiful. Now we're going to gently start to blink the eyes open. Let's release the mudra. 
and then hands come on towards your knees or your thighs. I'm going to mirror you for this one. We're going to take a few torso circles. So as we inhale, lean the body over towards the left. So the head, the shoulders, the torso leans over towards the left. And then we'll start to circle the chest and the torso forward. So almost like you're looking over a fence in front of you. And then circling the torso over towards the right. And then shifting the weight towards the back of the bum as you round through the spine. And then let's keep that rhythm going. So gentle circles. If you want to incorporate the breath, you can inhale for half the circle. And then exhale for the other half. And really think about going at a speed that allows you to feel and perceive the sensations in the stretch. So we're looking to lean more towards control rather than speed. Nice. Option to close the eyes as well. And once you've gone a couple of rounds in one direction, it might feel quite intuitive to change the direction of the circle. Optional. Taking a breath in and a breath out. Beautiful. And we'll gently start to make these circles a little bit more smaller as we draw the torso back towards the kind of center channel of the body. And then when you're ready, we'll just gently start to blink the eyes open, come back into the space and we'll make our way onto hands and knees. So if you've got a jumper on or socks on, just a good time to pop them off. And then making your way onto tabletop. Now I'm practicing on two mats here. So I've got a lot of padding underneath the knees. However, if you'd like to have a blanket, if you're practicing on quite a hard floor, it might feel quite nice to have a blanket underneath the knees. So we'll bring the wrists roughly underneath the shoulders, knees beneath the hips, spread the fingers wide. And then we'll start to take some circles with the torso, uh, sorry, with the hips. As we inhale, rocking the hips over towards the right, scoot the hips back towards the direction of your right heel, then the left heel, forwards towards the left wrist, and then the right wrist. So we're moving in a clockwise direction with the hips. And again, inhaling for half the circle. Exhaling for the other half, bending the elbows as much as you need to make these circles a little bit more comfortable. And then once you've gone a couple of rounds in one direction, again, we're gonna change and go anti-clockwise. Dropping out of the thinking, processing, analyzing mind into a little bit more of an immediate sensory experience of your physical body. Two more breaths in here. Beautiful. And then we're gonna gently come back up to a neutral spine. Take an inhale as you are, and as we exhale, you might bring the big toes together, maybe the knees come a little bit wider as we draw the hips back towards the heels and come into Balasana Child's Pose. So you might slide the fingertips a little bit further forwards as you lengthen the arms and then rest the forehead down towards the earth. Take a breath in and a breath out. And then as we inhale, lift the head, lift the chest, and we're gonna walk the hands over towards the left. So you might find that one hand maybe comes off the mat some people like to place the right palm on top of the left. Take a breath in and as you breathe out, allow the head to relax down in between the upper arms. So we're opening up through the right side body and contracting through the left. Take an inhale, sense of the right hip drawing back towards the right heel. And exhale, just an energetic sense of the breath moving towards the right side of the lungs and the right rib cage. Let's relax with the breath for one more cycle.
and inhale, lift the head, lift the chest, and then we'll walk the hands back through center. We'll go the other side. So walking the hands over towards the right. You might choose to keep the hands shoulder width apart, maybe the left hand on top of the right. Take a breath in and as you breathe out, relax the head down. So the head doesn't actually have to touch the floor. It can hover a couple of inches away from the ground. And this time we're drawing the left hip back towards the left heel. Fill to the breath through the experience of the posture. One more breath in here. Beautiful. And inhale, lift the head, lift the chest. And then exhale, just walking the hands back through center, taking a little bit more of a symmetrical child's pose. You might wobble the hips back towards the heels a little bit. And then exhale, we're going to start to lift the hips off the heels and then start to tuck the toes, hover the knees off the mat. Start to pad or walk the hands towards the feet here. And we're just going to end up in a kind of a little bit of a floppy forward fold. So feet, knees can be a little bit wider than hip width apart. That feels a bit more comfortable for your body. Bend the legs generously and just have a sense of the upper body relaxing down. And some people like to take a really gentle sway of the upper body from side to side. Maybe you clasp elbows and take a little bit more of a ragdoll shape. Just start to shift the weight forwards very gently, backwards, maybe over towards the right and the left. And we'll just take that one more time. So just as you shift the weight forwards backwards, side to side, can you have a sense of the back of the head relaxing down a little bit more? Take a breath in. And then exhale, let's just relax the arms down. Inhale, bend the legs, press down through the feet and then exhale, roll the spine all the way up to standing. Just take your time here, about 30 seconds maybe to roll yourself all the way up. And then once we get all the way up, we'll take a nice slow inhale. Exhale, letting go. So feet, knees stay about hip width apart. As we inhale, tucking the chin down towards the chest. So you're looking down at your feet, head and neck heavy. And then exhale, just rolling the right ear towards the right shoulder. Then inhale, we'll come back through symmetry, chin to chest. Exhale, roll left ear towards the left shoulder. Just keep this rhythm going, really gentle stretch out for your neck. Some people like to close the eyes. Others maybe just relaxing the gaze downwards. And keep with this movement if you want, kind of like a semicircle movement, or you can take it into a full circle, a full rotation of the head above the shoulders, opening through the neck and throat. Nice, and again, moving at a pace that allows you to really feel and drop into the sensations of the stretch. Two more breaths in here. Beautiful. And then drawing the head, the shoulders, the neck back through center. So we're standing at the back of our mat, feet, knees about hip width apart. And then let the arms relax down either side of your body, slight tuck of the chin. Breathing in. Breathing out. And we'll start to move with the breath. So as we inhale, arms reach forwards up and overhead, palms might join. Exhale, bend the legs, lead with the chest and fold forwards, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, hands slide up towards the knees as we lift and lengthen upper body parallel to us. I think flat back position. Exhale to bend the legs and fold a little deeper, merging the belly and the thighs. Inhale, we'll root down through the feet, come all the way up to standing. Arms reach up and overhead, optional mini back bend as you come up to stand. Exhale, bend the elbows, hands draw down through the midline of the body, thumbs to heart center. Keep that slight uh, pressure in the palms as we inhale, reaching the fingertips up towards the sky. And then exhale, reach the arms out wide, swan dive forwards back into your forward fold. 
Inhale, halfway lift. Flat back position. Exhale, bend the legs and fold. We're going to bring the hands down in front of the feet and just kind of pad the hands forward so we're ending up in a high plank position. So no need to look too graceful or pretty while you do this. Coming into some sort of high plank. Shoulders over wrists. Take an inhale. Exhale, let's drop the knees down towards the earth. Untuck the toes and then bend the elbows. Front body comes all the way down. Beautiful. Then we're going to sweep the arms behind the back of the body. So palms facing down, palms facing up. Doesn't really matter. Then as we inhale, pressing the pubic bone down towards the ground, as we find a, a really gentle back bend, lift the head, lift the chest. Option to stay here, maybe the hands lift as well, or maybe you point the toes back and the shins, the knees and the feet lift. Locust pose. Take an inhale, have a sense of the head and the feet reaching away from each other. Squeeze the bum. Exhale, let's lower down with control. Maybe the forearms form a little pillow underneath the head. Turn the chin cheek or forehead down and have a little wiggle of your bum just to release any tension that may have built. Breathing in. Breathing out. And as we inhale, we're going to lift up into a sphinx position. So elbows roughly underneath the shoulders. If this feels too much, we can always bring the elbows a little bit further forwards. Feet can be as wide or as close together. Toes pointing back and pressing down through the forearms here as you lift up through the chest and let the belly sink a little bit lower. Traction the shoulders away from the ears. Just breathe into the shape. Really great pose if you're experiencing any lower back pain or tension. Two more breaths in here. Now, option to stay here. You want to come into a little bit more of a quadricep stretch. We can draw the right forearm across the front of the mat. Left arm sweeps back. Left leg bends. Maybe you take a hold of left foot, left toes, left ankle. And then some people like to keep in this back bend. For me, I quite like to bring the front body down. And then rest the hand, uh, sorry, rest the head on top of the arm or the hand. And then if you have a hold of the foot, just have a sense of drawing the foot a little bit closer in towards that left bum cheek. Finding a slight sensation of lengthening through the front of the left thigh, quadricep muscles. Breathing in. Breathing out. And when you're ready, we'll release that left foot all the way back, just nice and controlled landing. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. So you can either lift up into your back bend as you bend the right leg, sweep the right arm back, take a hold of foot, toes, ankle, or maybe you bring the chest down so that you rest the chin on the hand or the forearm. Wherever you are, just starting to lengthen the inhale and the exhale so that they're about the same length as each other. Breathing in, breathing out. Beautiful, and then we'll slowly let that right leg all the way back, let it land lightly. Then inhale, last bit of movement here, hands underneath the shoulders. Exhale, we're going to push back through hands and knees, and we're just going to take one downward facing dog. So tucking the toes, hovering the knees off the mat, sending the tailbone high as you come into this kind of upside down V shape, downward dog. I always like to bend the legs here just to make sure that I'm lengthening this tailbone and the spine up towards the sky. And then keep pressing down through the index fingers, the thumbs and the little finger as you maybe take a few pedals out through the feet. Maybe a little shake of the head, yes and no, and just let your body acclimatize to this shape. 
weave the breath into the experience of the shape, the posture. Breathing in and breathing out. Beautiful. Two more breaths in here. So either in stillness or in movement, you choose. And as we inhale, drop the knees back down towards the earth. Untuck the toes. Exhale, balasana, child's pose. This time, maybe you take a different version of balasana. So you might fold the forearms, create a little pillow for yourself. Other people just like to sweep the arms around the body. It's almost like a little bit more of a nurturing child's pose as you bring the forehead down towards the earth. Three more breaths in here. Dropping out of mind into heart. Beautiful. And when you're ready, we're going to lift ourselves off the mat, come into any comfortable seated position, and we're going to make our way into our restoratives. It's always nice to move the body a little bit just to get the energy flowing, the kind of breath moving, the blood moving before we come into a little bit more stillness. So we're going to come into a supported bridge posture with the option of coming into Urdhva um, Hashimitanasana. That's the one. I always forget the name. It's... um inverted forward fold so i'll show you how to come into that if you want but we'll start off in supported bridge pop on any socks or jumpers that you took off make sure that you're warm somewhere that is dark ideally or as dark as possible <laughs> with the light and just make sure that you're comfortable as well so we'll take our bolster if you don't have a bolster you can always use two bricks instead and then take the bolster widthways along the middle of your mat. So you've got enough space behind your bolster and you've got enough space in front. And then we're going to pop our bums on the bolster and sit on our bolster. Feet knees about hip width apart. Just make sure that the ankles are roughly underneath the knees. So we want to try and avoid any positioning where the feet are a little bit further forward. So this doesn't feel too comfortable for your spine. So just bring or shuffle the feet a little bit closer towards you. Then hands come behind you, behind your bolster, behind your breakfast. As you press down through the feet and the hands to lift your hips, slide your hips forwards, and then bring the sacrum down towards the ground. So thinking lower back area. And then just using your elbows here to shuffle the head and the shoulders down towards the earth. Arms come out into a V shape either side of your body. Slight tuck of the chin. Darkness can be quite a helpful component in restorative. So if you do wish to close the eyes, feel free. If there's anything that you want to place on top of the eyes, to add to that darkness element, feel free to. We'll settle using a few breaths and then I'm gonna leave you in a little bit of stillness. So when you're ready, inhale fully. Exhale through the mouth, let it go. Inhale through the nose. through the mouth. One more breath in here. Exhale, think about releasing every last drop of air through the mouth slowly so that you're emptying completely. Let the breath resume at its natural rhythm. And I'll leave you now in a little bit of stillness. Just breathe and be.
or the last couple of minutes in this posture, you have the option to stay as you are. You want to come into inverted forward fold. We can start by drawing the knees in towards your chest. And then just start to tip the weight of the legs back so that you bring the knees a little bit closer in towards your chest. Now, for me, I quite like to take the knees a little bit further apart, just allows a bit more space for my belly. You want to find that point of gravity where the knees and the legs are tipping towards you. And keep the legs bent. Some people like to extend the legs a little, but try not to draw the feet too far back. So we're not pushing into plow pose, a little bit more of a inverted upside down forward fold. And draw the knees a little bit closer together if that feels more comfortable. Breathing in. Breathing out. Be here for about one more minute. Take our two breaths together. So inhale through the nose. Exhale to release fully. Last inhale. And as we exhale, let's start to draw the knees back away from the chest. Land the feet back down towards the ground. So coming in back into supported bridge, if you're not already there. A little wiggle of the hips just to bring some sensation to low back. We'll press down through the hips to lift your hips off your bolster bricks and then slide your bolster forwards. So you bring the spine back down towards the earth. Extend the legs and let's melt into Shavasana. If you don't feel comfortable taking your Shavasana on your back, you can always take it on your side or on your front instead. Nothing else to do but rest. And Start to begin to deepen your breath. Being a slower, sweeter, deeper breath in and out. And if you have more time to stay here, I encourage you to stay in your Shavasana. Otherwise, starting to bring back some gentle movement to your body. Full body stretch. Maybe a yawn. And then we'll draw the knees in towards your chest. Give yourself a nice big hug, a little squeeze. 
And then if you'd like to end your practice in a seated position, just gently coming up into a comfortable seat, facing roughly this way. Hands can rest on top of the knees or the thighs. You can bring the hands together in the heart space. And just bringing to mind that one thought that you'd like to release or let go of for the coming season. And let's release it together by taking one last breath in and out. So when you're ready, slow inhale through the nose. Exhale, letting go. Thank you so much everyone for practicing with me. I'm going to end the video now.